Whether you're looking to get your very first clear of the season or try to farm multiple clears to get the brand new Slammer Adept Sword, which I believe is going to be one of the best swords in the game, this is the most effective, efficient, and safest way to clear the Nightfall Grandmaster Corrupted that absolutely anyone can do without any special difficulty to obtain weapons or loadouts or anything of that nature. Your guns, in fact, don't even really matter all that much. This is what I'm running personally. As we all know, this is an unstoppable and overload Nightfall with a solar surge, 25% bonus to solar damage. So I recommend at least one person on your team have an unstoppable weapon, like an unstoppable hand cannon. And I recommend that at least one person on your team have a primary ammo source of overload stuns, like a pulse rifle or an auto rifle. Beyond that, you don't really need to invest in champion stunning too much because of the overload rocket seasonal mod. So I'm just rocking Galahorn and I'm having my two teammates run solar rockets. You can do Apex Predator, you can do Hezen Vengeance. Even if you have a non-solar rocket, you could run that too. But other than that, you can kind of use whatever weapons you want. Like I said, I highly recommend solar stuff. What's really going to matter is your subclass setups. The number one thing that I recommend to make this Grandmaster Nightfall as easy as possible is a minimum of one Solar Celestial Nighthawk Hunter on your fire team. This is the build that I'm running for mine. You don't have to match it bar for bar. Um, I will have a build link in the description to my build guide video for Celestial Solar Nighthawk. These are the specific mods I'm running for this Grandmaster. And I'm going to talk about exactly why as we get into the run, why Celestial Nighthawk is so important for making this much easier and much safer. As far as the other two players on your team, I highly recommend they bring either a Warlock or a Hunter. Titans aren't particularly great for this GM, but it doesn't matter too much. I love having at least one Invis Hunter. Like I said, it's not necessary, but it's gonna make a few portions of the strike a little bit quicker and just a little bit safer, as you'll see when we get into the run. Alternatively, if you don't wanna bring an Invis Hunter, you could just bring a second Celestial Steel Nighthawk Hunter if you wish. If you have someone coming in on a Warlock, I highly recommend they bring Solar Warlock. I love them rocking Daybreak with Dawn Chorus. I know typically people go well of Radiance for Grandmaster Nightfalls, but I feel like Dawn Blade along with Dawn Chorus really, really shines in this Grandmaster Nightfall. So that's kind of it for the loadouts. I'll have my teammates launch us up and we'll get straight into the run. And I'm going to give you guys every single tip that you could need to know, all the shortcuts, all the, you know, safe ways to play each encounter and all of that good stuff. While we're flying in, I can use this time to let you know that we're filming this guide live at twitch.tv slash MacDix, which is also where I do carries of this Grandmaster Nightfall. I'm probably gonna be doing carries for this all week. So if you're still having trouble, you need assistance, feel free to stop by, I can help you myself. So the way we're gonna start out is we are going to nuke this overload champion right here. Just absolutely cook him. And then the second we murder him, we're actually gonna break off over here to the right side of the arena and skip past literally every single enemy. We're going to intentionally not kill any of the ads. We're just gonna come over here and kill this main uh, taken Centurion boss right here. As the Galahorn player, I love to shoot a rocket to give my teammates Pack Hunter. They can each shoot a rocket, absolutely cooks him, and he's good to go. And then I'm gonna have my Invis Hunter make us invisible, and we're literally just gonna sprint past every single other enemy. I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, there's an overload champion that you skipped, but skipping him actually does not take away your platinum status on the Nightfall. The only way you lose platinum is if you kill enough enemies to spawn the second overload champion and you skip both of them. But if you just run around all the adds and get past them, kill that uh, main Centurion boss to go ahead and progress the checkpoint and run through, you will still get platinum despite skipping that overload champion. And it saves you like multiple minutes of time to do it that way. Uh, as we're running in the portal, just gonna make sure to reload all of our guns. Obviously when we step in here, gonna have a couple Scions that we're gonna kill real quick, nothing too crazy. And then once we kill the Scions, we're gonna prepare some of the balls. So I just like my teammates used to hold a charged ball. Um, you can drop them on the ground for a couple seconds, but I highly recommend keeping them in your hand for the most part, because Bungie did recently nerf them to a certain degree, where if you leave them on the ground for too long, they will end up disappearing, so you can't stockpile them too much. So uh, you can set them down here and there uh, to just get a couple of seconds of shooting, but for the most part, you want them in your hand. You're going to then all come over here to the right side. First wave is just going to be Scions, but once that second wave spawns, you're going to go ahead and toss all the balls to strip the shields off of everything, uh, kill the two regular Phalanxes relatively quickly and easily, and then you're going to be left with the tankier Centurion boss enemy. 
You're gonna chip away at him nice and easy. Get him maybe to a third HP or a quarter HP. And then after doing so, you're then going to prepare another two balls for the upcoming wave. So I'm gonna have my teammates and myself come over here. I'm gonna toss the ball to my teammate and then might even shoot a Gallahorn at this guy just to knock him down a little more quickly. I'm gonna have my other teammate help me drop him a little faster. Because we don't have to have both balls prepped right before we start. We can just have one prepped and then we can prep the other after we already start. But once we kill him, we're going to position over here at the front. Because there's that taken puddle right behind us. And we're just going to go ahead and take care of all the scions. If you have supers at this point, this is when you would use them. But if you're going extremely fast like we are, uh, you're not going to have supers at this point. So you can just go ahead and throw the balls and deal with them with your weapons. But um, you can kind of move around the arena. Pretty simple. And all three of those guys are dead. Blinding grenade launcher feels fantastic right there. Because even though you cannot... Uh, or not blinding grenade launcher, I apologize. Disorienting grenade launcher. Even though you cannot disorient... Um, oh, not a Galahorn. Even though you cannot disorient the uh knight boss you can disorient both of the taken phalanxes and then they won't shoot at you or blast at you at all um so we're just gonna clean up all of these enemies like normal make sure before proceeding that there's no ammo hanging out in the arena for you specific uh, primarily heavy ammo um and then you're gonna go ahead and advance forward and slowly but surely take care of this shrieker it's pretty annoying but Take them out nice and easy. And again, this is why I love having at least one disorienting grenade launcher on my team. You can go ahead and shoot it at the knights real quick. It basically flips the light switch on them, and then they can't do a single thing. So we're going to continue pecking away at these knights. Once both of those knights are dead, we can go ahead and continue and take out the first unstoppable ogre right here. So already my unstoppable shot, and I'll pull out my Galahorn, give my teammates a pack hunter, and he'll absolutely get cooked. Then we have one more unstoppable ogre that'll be more towards the back of the arena. And we're going to wait until he advances a little bit so we have an easier shot on him. We're going to stay behind this pillar to be safe from the shrieker. Optionally, you can kill it if you would like, just to make things a little more simple. But we're just going to bait this ogre up to us. I'll mix in another Galahorn shot. Um, you don't have to burn these guys with heavy. It kind of depends on your ammo situation. I've got, I had seven heavy rockets, so I was feeling fine. Once you kill this second ogre, though, you're going to have your invis hunter just go ahead and run past everything up to just about where that knight is. And you'll notice when he gets up there, everything else is going to despawn. Now, like I said, this is not a requirement. If you don't have an invis hunter, you can instead just fight through all of these guys. But um, definitely saves you a little bit of time for your hunter to just run up and despawn everything. Once he gets to the point where he despawns everything, he's going to stop completely and wait until the rest of us catch up. And the first thing you want to do is absolutely cook this unstoppable ogre uh, wherever he spawns. That is your number one priority, is to kill this bad boy first. So we're going to go ahead and drop him. Next up, we're going to kill the hive uh ogre in the regular realm the boss ogre so generally speaking the order that you want to do this in to guarantee they get platinum and make things the easiest is the regular hive unstoppable ogre in the regular realm then you're going to take out the hive boss ogre in the regular realm great place to use supers right here so we have our dawn blade i'm pretty sure so we can kind of use our dawn blade to uh throw a few swings back at him um if we have it available if you don't have it available it's perfectly fine you'll just chip away at him with uh, regular shots at this point. Obviously, making sure to play your lives. You don't want to advance too far into that arena like I did, because then you get yourself in a bit of a sticky situation. But until we're done with the Light Realm, we do not want to mess uh, too significantly with anything in the Taken Realm, especially the Taken Boss Ogre. We do not want to kill that Taken Boss Ogre before we kill both of the unstoppable Taken Phalanxes under any circumstance. So here we'll probably pop the Dawn Blade and go ahead and drop the regular high boss ogre. Uh, if you don't have the Dawn Blade, you can of course just go ahead and use a Galahorn and shoot some rockets. Not a problem at all. 
So Dawnblade got a decent bit of damage. Um, obviously, a problem there, though, is that the Dawnblade was popped a little too late into the phase. So if you are going to pop the Dawnblade and get some damage on or pop a super and get some damage on, you, of course, want to make sure that you do it right at the beginning of the phase when you get teleported, not when you're about to get teleported back out into the darkness arena. So he's not too... He doesn't have a whole lot of health left, so we'll just clean him up with some rockets and some shots from our primary weapons. And then once he's dead... We're actually going to make our way up here to the top left and play from up here once we're in the Taken Realm. I like to start out right here because there's a little uh, Taken Mine that I like to get close enough to activate and then I shoot it to kill it. And then I really, really love playing over here on this right side and baiting all the enemies up here in the staircase. Um, makes it really simple um, to kind of lure in all of the taken phalanxes the unstoppable taken phalanxes because as i said we want to kill those before we kill the high boss ogre reason being is that if we kill the high boss ogre um it will automatically despawn everything in the arena uh except for the shriekers um which includes the taken phalanxes that will of course rob you of your platinum and make it so that you will not get the swarmer sword from this run so we're just gonna continue uh continue to chip away at these two nothing too crazy Get some finishers on them. And once they are all dead, you can go ahead and mop up the taken boss ogres. What I like to do here is I like to make use of my Nighthawk. Pop it back here. Of course, miss my crit because uh, I'm not actually good at this game. I don't know why uh, so many people watch me on YouTube. I'm actually quite horrible. Uh, but uh, yeah, you just you get use all your ammo playing from down here, playing low. Not the end of the world. There is actually only one Celestial Nighthawk shot uh, in this entire strike that you have to be perfect on. We're coming up on that in a little bit. But once you kill that boss ogre, literally every single ad despawns except for the Shriekers. And this is where I really like having an Invis Hunter because the Invis Hunter can make your entire team invisible and you can book it uh, to that portal without having to deal with any of the Shriekers. So both of my teammates are going to run over there. It's not 100% necessary. You can make the run even if you don't have any invisibility. Um, but what makes things especially safer is if you have a blinding or, sorry, disorienting grenade launcher, you can shoot it at the Shrieker and it will force the Shrieker to stay closed. Even if you don't have that, as long as you just make a straight sprint for the portal and you kind of hug the wall on your way there, you'll still be completely fine. So I'm going to stun these guys real quick. We're going to try and drop them down. Just going to take our time. Apparently I'm uh, pulling out, not actually getting my Gallahorn shots off. Get a couple shots in. Drop that guy. Making use of our supers whenever they're available. Your super usage isn't too uh, critical here. Um, super usage is really going to um, just speed things up in certain situations. But uh, there's only one place in this entire strike where I would say that supers uh, or a particular super is actually necessary. Like I said, we'll get there. Um, it'll make more sense at that point. As I alluded to previously, that's just going to be the Celestial Nighthawk. You guys will see uh, what we end up needing it for. So, try to throw my Gunpowder Gamble down there to get the stun on both of those guys since it causes an ignition, which of course stuns Unstoppable Champions. Once we get those two guys dead, I really like to come over here to the left kill that guy right there and then i'd love to come over here and take out this overload hobgoblin from up high on occasion he'll be right there but typically he'll be standing right over here in this area so i'm gonna have my teammates just kind of support me with some overload shots whoa get my gallahorn reloaded get one more shot in because remember we do have overload rockets so it's going to make that uh, a little easier i'm gonna come down here get an overload shot on and we're just gonna drop this overload taken hobgoblin and nice and easy now for this section you can kill this uh tanky vandal if you would like but it is not necessary um what i really like to do is i like to have the invis hunter make everyone invis and then we can just run right past him makes things significantly easier so we're just gonna go ahead and go invis and then once you're invis you can just completely go right past him Alternatively, 
If you are the invisible hunter on your fire team, you can actually go solo, or even if you're not the invisible hunter, if you can just be crafty and kind of maneuver around him, you can go solo because uh, they changed the strike a while back to where only one person actually has to make this jump down here because um, it'll pull everyone forward. So I'm going to take this slow uh, so you guys can replicate it. But if you watch carefully how I do it, we're just going to go straight down and we're going to aim right here to go in between this rock and that kind of piece right there. And then after you make it past that section, it's just a free fall straight down. It really is that easy. And then once you get down to this point, you're going to pull all of your teammates and they will automatically uh, spawn right there. Now, this section is a little tricky. I highly recommend being careful in pushing up here uh, as there's not really any cover to hide behind. If you have an invis hunter, you can have them make you invis and you can kind of, you know, get a nice vantage point up there and sneak up on everything. Otherwise, you, you do just kind of play safely back here and play range um, at the very least until you can drop the taken acolytes that are hanging out over there main reason being is that because if you upset this taken hop goblin and he starts slinging out all of his retaliation orbs uh if you are over here and getting hit by all of them you're kind of screwed so take out that taken hobgoblin another thing to mention too is that taken hobgoblin um sometimes he likes to walk off the ledge if you do notice he's kind of like on his way off the ledge make sure you land at least one bullet on him so you get kill credit so you still maintain uh, a platinum score once we get to this point, what I like to do is I like to have the invis hunter make us invis right here and then right there at that rock. So you'll notice he'll make us invis first there and then we'll jump down, get to this rock and then he'll make us invis again and we're gonna run past literally all of these enemies. So he'll make us invis again. He's running on the Oculus, by the way. That's why he can do that twice. Um, theoretically an infinite amount of times if he always makes us invis. And what that is gonna allow us to do is it's gonna allow us to run past all of those enemies and we're just gonna sprint past everything and we're gonna take out this overload taken hobgoblin right here and just kind of bum rush him. And then we're gonna turn around and get the other taken hobgoblin that we just ran past. Again, like I said, that is not uh, necessary. So like if you don't have an invis hunter and you're not able to make that happen, it's completely okay. It just saves a little bit of time, as I said. It's kind of, if, if you're just going for one clear, don't really worry about that too much. But if you're going for a little bit more efficiency in your runs, then um, <clears throat> then it can feel really nice. Uh, speaking of efficiency, I'm noticing, I thought that I had a harmonic scavenger mod on here, a solar scavenger, but it seems that I don't because I only got one ammo from that finder brick. Highly recommend bringing a scavenger mod matching your rocket element um, so that you can be firing significantly more rockets and uh, getting through the strike a lot more quickly. So to start the boss fight, I'm gonna hop over here and then I'm gonna immediately hop right back. You can stand on this platform pretty much the entire time and it's completely safe as long as you're kind of ducking and denying a line of sight from the boss. You're then just gonna kind of like let all of the ads make their way into middle and chip away at them. Um, they can, the ads can still shoot at you. So on occasion you might have to like make your way even further over here to the left, but you're just gonna slowly but surely chip away at every single ad until you drop all of them. Makes things super simple. This is where the disorienting grenade launcher can come in really nicely as well if you want to push up and get a little bit more aggressive. But once all the odds are dead, you'll send one player on your fire team to go ahead and grab the ball. Here, you can either grab the ball and throw it to one of your teammates to one-shot the boss's shield, or alternatively, what I like to do is I just like to throw it uncharged at the boss three times right here. That way, I don't end up in a situation where my teammates are staying over there and I throw it to them and maybe, yeah, it charges it up and it could one-shot the boss, but if they miss the throw, then I throw it all the way back over and get the ball. I just like kind of throwing it one time and not really worrying about it anymore. So now we're just gonna chip away at the boss. We're gonna take out a quarter of our health and then we're gonna stop. We're gonna stop right at a quarter and then we're gonna turn all of our focus to mopping up all of the ads. If you have uh, supers available at this point, specifically the tether and the dawn blade, you're gonna wait until all of the ads spawn because the boss is gonna spawn a new wave once she gets over to the left side. You see all the ads spawning. Similar to the previous wave, they're all gonna pool in middle. You wait until they all hop over to middle and then you mop up every single one with the supers until the arena is completely clean and clear. So there's our tether right there. You'll notice that a tether right there just bottlenecks and chokes literally everything and it makes things so easy. Even with a hand cannon, I'm pretty much killing everything just because of the share damage from the tether. Um, it really is that simple. Let's see if I can get my 
gunpowder gamble all the way over there. Nope. <laughs> too much, uh, too much airborne time. But, uh, yeah, really, really simple to kill all these guys. You're just going to take your time. You're not going to rush anything. Uh, if you get impatient, as long as you have, like, a, you know, that blinding grenade launcher, disorienting grenade launcher that I alluded to, that can make it safe to advance and take out um, all the enemies is an option. But just going to take out every single ad. Once you take out all the ads, you're going to make your entire fire team come over here to this staircase where the portal to phase two is going to appear. So everyone's going to come over here with me and kind of hide out right here. And this is where the Celestial Nighthawk comes in massive. And it's not going to become immediately apparent why it comes in massive right here um, until we get to phase two. But I'll kind of explain it along the way. So I'm going to grab the ball. I'm going to throw it to one of my teammates to charge them. And then I'm just going to have him throw it back to me. Um, or they might throw it at the boss. If they throw it at the boss, you want to be ready on the Nighthawk. Make sure you hit the headshot on that Nighthawk. That is the headshot that you absolutely have to hit. Take your time with it. Be patient with it. Because, as you notice, it didn't just take away a quarter of her health and send her to 50% HP. It actually took away 50% of her health and sent her to a quarter. And the reason that that is so important for this strike is because it means that we are only going to have to crack her shield one time here in the Ascendant Realm in Phase 2 as opposed to having to crack it two times like we typically would. It also means that we will never, ever, ever have to deal with anything beyond Scions in the final section of the fight. Whereas typically when you're playing this fight, after you crack her shield for the first time and then deal 25% of her HP, um, you would get uh, a spawn with fallen taken captains that shoot the taken blights at you, which make that circular section an absolute nightmare. So having a Celestial Nighthawk makes the entire thing significantly safer just because of the sheer fact that you only have to do one shield break here in phase two as opposed to two shield breaks. Once you get here into phase two, obviously killing, uh, we're going to take care of that Hobgoblin with our rockets, our overload rockets, absolutely burn him. You don't need any heavy ammo for the boss whatsoever because um, once again, like I said, you're going to have your Celestial Nighthawk by the time you get back there and your Celestial Nighthawk will be able to do the job just fine. Once again here, killing the Taken Knight is what is going to send the boss away, so you don't even have to kill the Taken Phalanx from far away. Really, all you have to do is kill the Taken Knight. So we're just going to wait here. And then we're going to go ahead and drop this unstoppable Taken Phalanx. Oh, I get hit by him, but it's not really that big of a deal. Chip away at him. And perfect. And it looks like I I might have Celestial Nighthawk for the final boss. I might not. If you're running this, I highly recommend, if you're in the position I am, I highly recommend you just wait until you do have your Celestial Nighthawk. I don't want to draw out this video too much. So I'm just going to go ahead. We're already 20 minutes into the run. So I do kind of just want to rock and roll. But basically, the gist of it is you're going to send your most comfortable teammate, your most comfortable player, over to the left side of the arena and you're going to send the other two teammates to the right side of the arena preferably your two non-celestial nighthawk teammates because on their way around to the right side they're both going to pop their supers and use their supers to kill every single scion that spawns so if we go ahead and make our way up here i like to run directly at this totem so your non-roaming super player will come over here to the left and mop up any scions that are here whereas your other two teammates will come in with their roaming supers and pinch them on the other side they'll primarily be doing all the scions but if you did things right you're not even going to have a ball available right there your ball to break the boss's shield is instead going to be available up at the top middle uh which is really nice because like i said it means you only have to do one phase of the boss now, you can do a couple things here. You can, you know, optionally just throw the uncharged ball at her three times and crack her shield. You can throw it to a teammate to crack her shield in one go. It's completely up to you. Um, but once you crack her shield, you'll just go ahead and take her out. As you can see, I still do not have my Celestial Nighthawk up yet. Um, but it's not really the end of the world. You can kind of just shoot at her with regular ammo and regular bullets. Like, I have all primary ammo and she still died. If I had my Nighthawk available at that point, it would have been even simpler because I just pop Nighthawk, pop her in the head, and then she instantly dies. Like I said, if you're running this at home, probably wait until your Nighthawk is fully charged. Um, if, if, if it isn't at that point, you can easily shoot her in the head and take her out. 
But that was a, I know you can't see the time because of my webcam, but 23 minutes and 30 seconds. Not a speed run by any means, um, but these were just two individuals that I pulled from my Twitch chat to hop in and run this with me. We obviously didn't have any comms, uh, any voice comms throughout the entire run, and our loadouts weren't ultra curated. Like I said, the only thing that you really need walking into this is that Celestial Nighthawk Hunter to make it so that you only need to do one phase in the Ascendant Realm, which makes things significantly safer, so you're spending much less time on that circular platform where it's really easy to get knocked off and overwhelmed by ads. So hopefully this helped. If you are doing this to go ahead and farm for the Slammer Adept Sword, I would highly recommend you go for one with Eager Edge and Bait and Switch. I'm not 100% sure what the best guard and blade are. I was told that it was Swordmaster's Guard and either Jagged Edge or Honed Edge. Um, I'll kind of leave that up to you, whatever one you wanna go to. But I do know for sure that you're definitely gonna want one with Eager Edge and Bait and Switch. So hopefully this guide video helped. Consider subscribing if it did. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see videos like this for other Grandmaster Nightfalls. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.